Hello and welcome to today's product video. Today we're going to configure a simple Cyclu point-to-point -point link using Etherhall 1200 FX radios. To begin with, we're going to configure our network interface card to be in the same subnet range as the default IP addresses the Cyclu radios come with. Now we can navigate to the web GUI of the Cyclu radios, and this is https 192.168.0.1. The default login, username, and password for the Cyclu radios is admin and admin. Once we've logged in, we are greeted with the main dashboard page, which shows both radios currently in the link up state. In this page, we are able to see the current settings, like the transmit and receive frequencies, the RSSI levels, which is currently minus 36, our CINR, the modulation mode, which is currently QAM64, our estimated throughput on this link is one gigabit, and any active alarms. To configure this radio links, we're going to use the quick config wizard. In this tab is the system tab. We can name our units. So this one we're going to call the master and our remote side we're going to call the slave. We can also adjust the date and time. However, this is not necessary at this time. Next tab is the radio parameters. These will be determined by a link budget calculation. And in this example we're going to remain with the 500 megahertz channel. And we're going to change our transmit frequency to 82.375. We can then copy these current configurations over to the remote unit. As these radios are FTD, the transmit and receive frequencies are separated by 10 gigahertz. I'm going to adjust the transmit power on both units. And again, this will be determined by your link budget calculation. I'm going to leave the modulation mode in adaptive. And we can go to the next tab. In this tab, this we can enable or disable our Ethernet ports and or change the speed duplex, one gig fold duplex, depending. In most cases, this is left as default. Next. In this tab, this is where we can change our IP address of our radios. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one to 100, the master, and our slave. 200. We can also put in a default gateway if one is required. And that is the last step. We can click apply. We shall get a warning to tell us because we're changing our IP address, we could lose connection to our radio. And now you'll see that we've lost connection to our radio. We'll need to browse to the new IP address. We can re-log in using our default details, username admin and the password of admin. And we can now see that our radio will take a little bit of time for our remote to come up. 
Okay, now we have seen that the slave has re-established the link with the master. We can check our settings here. Our transmit and receive frequency has changed, 82.375 and 72.375 for the transmit on the right. Our RSSI is now around minus, 30, minus 37. CNIR is around 24, which is okay for us. Anything above 20 will give us a reasonably good link. Our modulation has remained at Quam64, giving us an estimate throughput of 1 gigabit. And our current alarms showing Ethernet 2 because we have nothing plugged into our Ethernet 2 port. And obviously on our remote end, we have nothing plugged in on our Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 besides PoE providing power for the remote unit. As the configurations are done, these are saved only to the running config. Therefore, if we lose power or we reset the units, we will lose these configurations. So in order to commit these to the startup configuration, we'll need to save these settings. So on the remote, we click on the save remote configuration and we confirm. And we do the same for our local unit. Now we've com committed our settings. Should the radio power off or reset the unit, we'll not lose our configurations. Let's go through a couple of the tabs to see what changes we've made and what are the options we have. Let's start off with the system. In here, we have the product name where we changed, date and time. We can now see the serial number of the unit and the current running firmware version of the unit. In the maintenance tab here, again, we can see the current running version as active and the backup version of firmware that we have, which is currently offline. We have the licensing here, so you can have license for encryption, data rates, layer 2 OM, resilience, and extend MMM. Cycle units offer a 30 day temporary license in which you can activate the feature while you await a license key. Further down we have the scripts that you can run. In most cases the system info is commonly used for troubleshooting. So simply click on the system info, click on run. And here we'll see a breakdown of all the configurations. So when you see a script chain, we know that the file is complete. We'll then highlight all of that, copy it into a notepad and send it off to technical support. Additionally, we have the configuration management. Here we can restore the unit to factory default. So simply by clicking the restore and rebooting the system, all settings will be reset to factory default. We can also show the current startup configuration. And of course you can copy this into a notepad. And this is your backup configuration file, should you need it. Moving on to the radio tab. Here we had the options to change the bandwidth, the frequency, and our transmit power. Here we should see the current RSSI levels and the CINR. We can again change the modes from adaptive, put it in, into alignment if required, when you fine tuning, 
and this is where we'll do this. Uh, we have advanced settings. Here we can change, currently the units are in auto, so they will select one side to be a master, the other to be slave. If you want, you can change this to be the master and the other side to be the slave. And you can also configure the link ID for additional security. Moving on to the Ethernet ports. Here we can enable and disable our Ethernet ports on both sides. And we can also set the speed and duplex for the link should it for the Ethernet should it be required. However, as mentioned, this is not normally the case in most deployments. Here we will see the current speed duplex of the port. We'll also see the transmit and receive throughput currently on those ports. As you can see, this one is there's no traffic passing through this Ethernet port because nothing's plugged in. However, we have this port which we're accessing the radio, so it's showing some throughput. Lastly, we have the network tab. This is where we configured our IP address. We can have up to four IP addresses and we can assign them to individual VLANs if required. Our default gateway IP address, IPv4 or IPv6. We can assign SNMP managers and the signal radio support version two and version three. We can set up our network time server if we have, and that will be set here. In the advanced settings, we can set up management access list. Here we can add up to eight individual IP addresses. And we can change the read write community for the SNMP or for version 3. We can change the, the login credentials. We can also add up add in syslog servers. And here is where we set our admin password. We can add additional users if required. And we have different options of text, super, news, or more. And that is how you set up a basic Cyclo Ethel 1200FX link. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, let us know, and we'll see you soon.